morning everybody. Out here at Trillium Lake. It's a nice peaceful morning. Didn't have to walk too far to find my frame. I'm gonna use the reeds on this side that are going out. Now as I'm ducking down, I'm noticing that there's a little nook coming out of the reeds, or I should say tucking in, that if I position it just right, Mount Hood's angle of the slope falls right into that. So I think I'm gonna set up right here. See how this goes. Yeah. So I recently got a set of graduated NDs with a square filter holder. So I'll be using that today. Set up my composition. One problem with Trillium is that the sun likes to hit the left side of the lake and the mountain way earlier than when it hits the water or the foreground. So your exposure is going to be a lot darker and you risk the chance of blowing out your highlights, which nobody wants to do in digital. You shouldn't do in digital either. We have great dynamic range, but sometimes it's not enough. So I'm going to use my 30 so that way I can get some nice little compression between the mountain and the foreground. Got a little duck coming up to say hello. I'm using the left side of the ridge reflection of the trees to lead your eye out towards the mountain. And then this side is also leading out towards the mountain with that little nook where I'm placing the reflection of it. I think it'll come together pretty nicely. The mountain's reflection not being exactly where I want it in that little bend in the reeds. So we'll see how this does. I'm using the middle of my frame right in the middle of the horizon that way I can have a nice split between the reflection of the water and the actual true summit kind of a mirrored image so I'll shoot one more exposure since I moved it 1 13th of a second f8 ISO 100 meh still overexposed the sky is completely blown out I only got a slight little bit of blinking in my JPEG readout on the water. And that's just on the reflection of the Palmer snowfield up there. How can I fix that? How can I get my sky darkened without having to edit it in post-processing? ND filters. What type? Square filter. Why? It's quick. Pull my square filter out. I have an adapter ring on the front of my lens, which makes it literally a snap to put on. I don't have the polarizer that's built into these holders. I just have mine on the front of my lens with the adapter ring set, stepped up to it. So I'll rotate my polarizer, darken my sky a little bit. That maybe brought me a third of a stop down. Get my filter holder ready. Now, I'm about one stop overexposed. So I'll use my 0.6 grad ND to knock that down. So I got the 0.6 grad ND. It's as simple as sliding it in right on the top. I prefer this method versus the square or screw on filters due to the quickness. And it's as easy if you have adapter rings on your other lenses to just go pop it off and then swap your lens and slide it back on. Easy peasy. Adjust the grad so that it affects not too much of the foreground but does knock down the sky quite a bit. That's perfect right there. So I'm still at 1 13th of a second, F8 ISO 100. And this is showing that I'm one stop underexposed, but reading my histogram, which is very nice having on the Sony A6000 through the viewfinder, is that it is a perfect exposure as is. I don't prefer to listen to the camera's metering due to it being off, depending on your type of a metering mode, if you're spot, matrix, or center weighted. So I go off of what I know to look good to the eye and as well as what's gonna get me the most detail for when I go into post. Let's see here, perfect. This is actually a good exposure. The foreground's not too bad. Sky's knocked down nicely. 
I actually might open up one more stop on my shadows. So now I'm at one sixth of a second. My highlights are still there, but it's pushing it. I'd have to bring them down in post. So what I've been lately trying to do, ah, oh, cool, bump my tripod. Oh well. What I've been trying to do lately is do as much as I can in camera to save myself time. So I'm gonna switch this to a 0.9 grad, see if I can darken that down a little bit more. And like I was saying earlier, the ease of switching these is so beautifully quick. Can't complain really. Let's see. Right there. So it's giving me a perfect exposure. Got nice shadow detail all across. Got nice highlights. Shoot that one. Very good. Very good. There's nothing wrong with this exposure. I'm quite happy. Let me check the sharpness on it. Eh, what do you know? It's not too shnabby. So, I'm loving the square filter holders. Makes it really convenient while I'm out in the shooting in the morning, but I'm gonna migrate on, move to the next spot. So, I'll see you guys shortly. So I'm getting set up here. I've got this log that's right ahead of me that's like a fallen tree. It's making a really nice leading line into the summit of hood there. I'm shooting at 30 millimeter. Hey little ducky, how you doing bud? What's up? My little homie. Anyways, I'm shooting at my 30 millimeter on the A6000. I'm at 1 15th of a second, F8, ISO 100. I need to focus real quick. So, being at F8, I should have a lot of focus from front to back, but I want to make sure that these reeds that are maybe five feet ahead of me are in focus. So I use an app called Hyperfocal Pro, which is super nice, very efficient. Now that I'm using my 30, I just punch in the 30 millimeter at F8. And it tells me that my hyperfocal distance is going to be six meters. Mm -hmm. So, what I like to do is I use direct manual focusing. That way, it auto focuses quick so I don't have to rack through the focus. And then I'll adjust it just slightly to six and a half meters. But now, with my focus peaking, I can see that my foreground is sharp, and my background is sharp as well. So, I'll take an exposure like this without any filters on, only in my polarizer to knock down the reflection in the water. And as I can see, I should pop this up on camera, I am about stop, stop and a third overexposed. You can see 0.9 grad. Throw it in, oops. Slide that bat boy down.
<coughs> excuse me, and now I am set. Nothing's overexposed. It says I'm a third of a stop underexposed, so I'll slide this up just a touch, just a hair to adjust that gradient. And perfect. I personally think that it looks better with just the slight ripple in this shot, so I'm gonna leave that in there. Perfect. Cool. Well, I'm gonna probably nail a couple more before I head out here, see if I might get a action shot of somebody fishing. There's actually quite a lot of people landing fish, so I might make the run home real fast and grab my fly rod. They're all starting to rise. You know what? Actually, I'm done shooting. I'm gonna go and fish. So, hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of a video, and I'll probably start doing more of them as time goes on, so stay tuned for those. And like I was saying, super quick with the square filters. Oh, I'm supposed to sign off, aren't I? Yeah, I'm Chris Santos with On The Brink Photo Talk. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>